All right, so I want to have a little talk about why at, when I do development on my project at work, we try to keep all of our components as logicless as possible. And to kind of explain what the purpose of this, you kind of have to understand like what the purpose of decoupling is. Maybe you need to know what like model view controller is and why like traditionally we separate the view from the actual controller that's controlling how the, you know, the logic works and how your state is changing. So there's a couple of benefits to like doing this type of logicless um, components. Basically it allows it to be easier to test your components. Um, there is a testing library called React Testing Library that everyone seems to use, but this isn't really a unit testing library. This is like an integration testing library in my opinion, because in order to test your component, that component basically has to do all of the stuff under the hood and then you like check the the elements on the page to see if it did what you think it should do. People will basically have a component and then they'll write like HTTP mock services. And there's a benefit to unit testing in my opinion. I know there's an argument that unit testing is a waste of time and some people don't like unit testing, but I do think unit testing has a purpose as long as you just, you know, you're careful with how much code coverage you're trying to cover with unit testing. And what I'm gonna talk about in this video, I think will also explain why Redux is kind of useful. It's kind of, it can, it can be seen as kind of overly complex and overly engineered, but it has a purpose and that purpose is decoupling your React components from your actual like logic, okay? So I have a next application here and I'm gonna show you what we have here. You basically can create some to-do list items. You can delete them, you can modify them and click enter. So nothing too groundbreaking there. But what I wanna kind of show is how I split this up, and this is kind of just like a prototype. I wouldn't probably do this in production. I'd probably do a different approach or use an existing framework or library such as Overmind.js or Cerebral.js. I really wanted to take this to the next level and do it properly. So this is next. And if I go to my pages and go to my index page, notice that this is all I have, right? I have this page exports a next React wrapper and I pass that a view, I pass it a controller, and I can also change the title on the page. So you can see up here, it says home. Um, and if we were to look at this next React wrapper, all this thing does is basically abstract the way next from our application. Now, the reason you're doing that is because sometimes as your team and project gets larger, um, at some point, libraries and frameworks are gonna die, right? Next is gonna die. Um, Angular JS died at one point. So the point I'm making that is the library and framework that you're using at some point, it's probably gonna become deprecated. No one's gonna maintain it. And it's useful if you have a project that you plan to like have around for five to 10 years, maybe you're working on a large scale government contract and the state of New York needs this thing to last for a very long time. It makes sense to kind of apply this pattern to separate your React and your next framework away from the actual like components, okay? What I kind of allowed us to do here is you can pass in a view and you can pass in a controller. And this little helper thing kind of sets up the view and the controller and allows data to be like manipulated and re-rendered. And then down here, we basically just render that view with the properties from the controller, all right? And you can kind of look through here. This is like a little hack you can do to like force React to re-render because in order to uh, tell React's functional components to re-render, you have to change some type of state, right? So we just have a counter, we increment it by one whenever you want to kind of re-render the controller. And we pass that re-render function into the controller. So notice here we pass in a controller, it's a function, we call it with a re-render method, we memoize it, and then we are using the outputs and passing that into here. So every time this, this wrapper re-renders, it's going to repass in the new state. So it just kind of like acts like a giant, you know, cycle of changing state, passing that to the component, re-rendering, and you know, you know how React works. But let's look at the actual controller in the view. Okay, so the controller in the view, they're decoupled in a way. And basically the only thing that's kind of coupling together is this interface, the uh, home props. And you might've seen this in other libraries and frameworks maybe. Um, I'm trying to get some, I kind of got some inspiration from another framework I've used. But the idea is your controller is what contains all the JavaScript logic. Okay, and your view has very little to no logic at all so that you can actually very efficiently unit test your your code, right? Maybe you don't really see the benefit of this. Maybe you don't really see the issue of testing your React components. But when your React components get more complex, you have like these use effect hooks running, you have multiple of them maybe, you have all these different state variables. And sometimes just to test something simple, you have to either mock weird stuff out or kind of do some weird stuff or just use React testing library because 
people have determined that testing components is very hard. So let's just integrate and let's just do integration testing because it's easier. That's not the right solution. The right solution is you need to decouple your React components from your logic so you can actually test your logic. All right, so the controller, when you call it, it has a re-render function and it has all these methods in it that you can kind of do things with some internal state. You can, you know, add an item which just pushes an item to an array and it calls that re-render function that tells React to re-render. There are probably other ways I can do this. I could probably use like JavaScript proxies to just have it automatically re-render when items are changed or pushed. I was just trying to keep it simple. And again, this is just like a little prototype. So we have a method to delete items by ID, uh, create a blank item, set an item as editing, save an item, and then we can kind of do what I call a computed, which are just methods that you can call and pass some arguments to get back like a Boolean or get back some data. So we have an is edit mode, and we have an update item name where you pass an item ID and a new name, and it basically loops that array, finds the item, and updates the name. All the logic that you saw for all this is completely decoupled from the component, right? I could take the same controller, I could put it in like a command line argument tool, like I could set up a node project, copy this TypeScript file over, and I could have the exact same logic with tests. I wanna say that I do have like a lot of this stuff tested out. So again, like this is totally decoupled from the, the view, right? I could take the same code, I could put it in Svelte. I could take the same code, I could put it in React or Vue. I could put it in Angular if I wanted to. It's just a bunch of JavaScript functions and methods that I can call, and that method will change the you know underlying state, and that state is used in the view. So let's go ahead and look at the view real quick. I haven't already kind of confused you with what I'm going on, with what's going on here. So let's look at the view. The view takes in some props, it takes in state, actions, and computeds. You can kind of add more things to this if you really want to, or you want to you know make it more complex. But if you look through the component, you'll notice that first of all, there's no next code at all. There's no Next.js code anywhere in this. And again, the idea is decouple your React components from Next because if you decide down the road, you don't want to use Next, you want to use Remix. Well, it's an easy copy paste. The, the component was completely isolated and decoupled from Next. So you don't have to worry about that. And if you look through this component, you'll see that there is no logic anywhere, right? We have state. That state is used to render out those items. And then for each item, we call different methods or computeds to determine if that item has been in edit mode to determine like when you click on the input, what do you do when you type into the input? Well, we're just updating the item's name. And then when the user press, presses enter, this is like the one place I have logic in the component. I could have abstracted this away into a helper. I could have put this in the controller as well. And probably I should, so that makes it so I can actually test it. But again, the idea is your controller shouldn't be coupled to your browser. What if this was like a command line tool you wanted to use? Well, then your command line tool shouldn't know about the enter key. Well, maybe, maybe it does, I don't know. But this seems like more of like a browser, you know, React implementation. So just have that thing call the save item, which can call a database and persist that item if you want to. And then down here we have like a div. So when you click it, we're just setting this item ID as editing. So if I go here and click on one of these, it basically sets it as editing. And that's it, I can delete some items too with this button. So on click, we're just gonna call actions.deleteItem by ID. Component is really clean. There is no logic in it. So again, the point I'm trying to make is like, the less, you, the less logic you put in your components, the easier it is to actually swap these components out, right? If I had decided I wanted a completely different view, I wanted to do some A-B testing on views, but the methods for these views need to be kind of similar. Well, you just have to go to pages index and I could just have a toggle here to say if you're one user I'm going to show you a different view so again you can like easily just like you know import a different view like view a or view b and then you can kind of do some a b switching here if you really wanted to now is that a, is that a real benefit I don't know I'm kind of just pulling it pulling strings right here but just these things are decoupled from each other now right and so you can swap out your controllers or your views as long as the interface between them remains the same I mean, you can make arguments that like you can switch stuff out, you can swap stuff out, stuff is decoupled. But I think the real benefit to all this is you can actually unit test all the logic for your component and you don't have to deal with any React stuff, right? You don't have to deal with like, how do you verify the effect only runs once? What if you're using React 18 strict mode, your effects are firing twice, that makes testing even harder. All you have to do is just test your controller, right? All the logic that's really critical to what, you know, the component on the page is doing it's all nested here with the logic. So you have like tests that say like add item should basically push an item to the array. Create a blank item should 
push a new item to the array and have like some default you know definition to it when someone tries to call delete item by id you verify that thing actually removes the item from the an array of lists update new item name uh, again like verify that the render has been called and verify that the name has been updated to whatever the user actually tries to update it to so these are kind of basic tests but I'll, if i was actually like integrated with a api i could further mock out those api functions and verify that certain things were called right so you could probably even take this like a step further and you could do like dependency injection to have all your dependencies pulled in so for an example let's say you had to do a bunch of fetch requests or http requests well you could have those passed in as you can have those passed in as function arguments and just like dependency injection doing it that way um now the one thing again this is like a prototype so like don't judge this too hard the fact that I'm calling render after all these methods, it kind of reminds me of the old way. It reminds me of something called Backbone JS, where you had to like manually call like render on stuff. But I don't know, it works, and it makes this thing a lot more testable, in my opinion. So what I would say going forward is, if you actually believe what I'm saying and keeping your components logicless and how that can help with a larger scale project and a larger scale team with testing, who I think the main takeaway is you have to enjoy unit testing. If you don't like unit testing, then by all means just use react testing library and have fun with that but if you actually think that you should decouple your components from your views and do proper unit testing on your controllers then this is an approach you could take there's one a library that doesn't really have a maintainer anymore but overmind.js i'll check it out it's pretty cool it's kind of a similar approach where you have like a a global state tree and you are separating your logic from your views as well um, it has a bunch of cool stuff in here. I've used this, like, I played around with this. Um, at work, we use something called Cerebral JS. And that is also not really maintained anymore by the main person who made it. But again, this just kind of gives your view a list of actions it can kind of invoke. Cerebral JS is what we use on our project at work, which kind of helps us achieve what I'm, what I'm showing you here in this code. But it's, it's a better way to do it, in my opinion. So if you're actually going to, like, if you want to play around with this approach with like keeping your components as logicless as possible, I would definitely check out Overmind.js and just kind of understand like what it can provide you. Um, also, I mean, you can achieve the same thing with using like Redux. I think the, the goal is like just don't put a ton of ton of logic in your components because it just becomes really hard to test and manage. But I don't know if you enjoyed watching this little talk about react and views and controllers and decoupling and whatever uh, let me know your thoughts let me know if this is just a complete dumb approach if this is just over engineering or if you can actually see some merit to following this approach let me know in the comments anyway have a good day and happy coding and be sure to join my discord if you want to have a chat with me or talk to anyone in my community